Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to High on Rugs. Today we're going to be making a delicate little sunflower. It's going to be a bath mat for my mom's friend. My mom was excited I was making rugs and told all her friends and she told her friend that I would make her a sunflower rug and I'm a nice guy so that's just what I'm gonna do. So I begin by throwing down my cloth and measuring out the cloth to fit the frame. About three foot three by three foot three which will give me a nice little overhang so I don't have to worry about the cloth fraying. And then I'm just going to start cutting out the cloth and do my signature magic trick that make Penn and Teller say whoa. So with the cloth cut out it's time to start hanging it onto our frame and I start from the top because of gravity and I start working my way around and going around and around pulling it tighter and tighter until it is nice and taut, nice and tight. And then I bust out my projector and my image using my very high-end image editing software known as MS Paint. And with it projected onto the cloth, I can start doing my drawing. Now if you're a keen observer, you might notice that I am drawing it on the wrong side. This was not intentional, this was just me being silly. You son of a bitch! So, I basically filmed myself drawing it on the wrong side, and off camera, I repeated the drawing process on the other correct side, but I just didn't show that part. So, this one ended up drawn on both sides, but it's not a big deal. Only took a few extra minutes. So just doing the big circle, the inner circle, all the petals, quite a lot of petals. And the little lines on each petal to show the little wrinkles and details. And with that all done, it's time to bust out my black yarn and start doing an outline. It starts out easy enough, just big circle, smaller circle, smaller circle. But then we gotta get into all the little details and doing the petals. And you can see by the back of my head that I just woke up. Nothing like making a rug first thing in the morning. And now I'm starting on the pedals, trying to get nice curves. It's a bit of a challenge, still honing my skills. I think I need to work on my stop and start technique a little bit. Help me get nice curves. And let me tell you, this rug is by far the most detailed of anyone, of any that I've ever done yet. This is my fifth rug since starting my rug making career, if you can call it that. And yeah, definitely a lot more outline than I did before. My previous one was Hello Kitty, which is basically an outline, a couple of eyes, and a bow. So this definitely has a lot more intricacy going for it. I probably should have counted how many petals there were. I would say there's at least 30 or 40. So it was quite the grind, but that's pretty much how you gotta look at it. It's just take it little by little, and it ain't gonna get done unless you work on it. So it's just going one thing at a time. Now I'm just doing the thin little lines inside the petals, which I usually do two strands of yarn to get nice thick lines, but here I went down to one just to thin it out a little bit, because I didn't want those to be too thick. And now I'm just showing that the outline is done, and I started doing some black lines around the outer border. I thought about keeping it the shape of the actual sunflower, but folding all those triangles over the pointy petals would just take forever. 
and I wasn't about to do that. So now it's just a matter of filling out all the black. And I made it a good 80% of the way around when I ran out of black yarn. Right, right here at the very edge of victory. So I decided that's just going to have to wait till another day for me to finish that, and I'm moving on to the brown, the darker outer brown. And so begins another grind, line by line, filling it all in. And I want to keep them nice and close together, because that's how you achieve a very thick, good feeling rug that is high quality. And that's what I'm shooting for. And yeah, I should probably mention that I live in Florida, and midway through making this rug we were struck by a hurricane, but that's just the way it goes in Florida. Not to make a little of it, hurricanes are quite a big deal, but this one was a Category 1. We were lucky enough that it didn't do too much damage, just a few little broken tree limbs here and there, but closer to the ocean they got pretty flooded, so hope everybody's doing okay. But I just wanted to show that rain or shine, hurricane or no hurricane, I'm making a rug. Can't stop me. Now if I lost power, I would have been stopped, but <laughs> luckily no power loss. And here I am, since it's the next day, I got some more black yarn and I'm just finishing out the border. And now with the border and the dark brown finished, Here's a nice little time lapse of me just filling in the center with the lighter brown. It's all quite satisfying when I watch it in fast motion. Doing it, on the other hand, it's a little tedious at times, but I enjoy it. And now we're on to the yellow, which is the main color of the whole thing. And if there's one mistake that I made, and I don't even know if I could call it a mistake because I don't know, it would be that I did the thin black lines inside the petals beforehand. Because now, I, when I'm going in with the yellow, I have to work around every single one of those tiny little lines and do all kinds of bobbing and weaving in different directions. But I say I don't know because trying to put them in afterwards, eh, they might not have looked very good. If I put them in when all the yellow was already in, they might have just been kind of speckled instead of solid lines. So yeah, I'm still very new to this. So, just learning by doing, gaining experience. And that's really the way you gotta go about it, is that you, you have to learn hands-on. But doing the petals, the yellow, was definitely the most tedious part of doing this entire rug. There are so many petals, and each one of them would take about four or five minutes, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when there's that many, it, it really adds up. So I would do maybe three or four, take a break for a few minutes, do another three or four, and then see how I'm feeling. The petals in total, they probably took a good four hours, three or four hours. It was quite time consuming. And here we're coming up on the final petal. Just going row by row, skipping over the black lines. And it's really cool just watching it fill in. And 
There's the last petal complete, and with that... It was all yellow. And now it's time to go on to the more orangish shade of yellow, the darker yellow. And this part was a lot easier. I mean, there are pretty much just as many petals, but you can see they're mostly a lot smaller. So whereas the yellow took probably three or four hours, this took 20 minutes. It was much, much easier. And here we are on the last little bit of orange. And with that, the tufting is pretty much done. I show very briefly that I went through and just added some black spots in the center as like little seeds to try to break up the kind of, I mean, it's the big boring patch of brown. So I wanted to add a little something in there, break it up. But I don't know how I feel about it. So let me know what you think. Should I have done seeds or should I have stuck with no seeds? And it's time to start gluing the back. Just taking out clump after clump of the adhesive, spreading it on, covering the entire back. I want to make sure everything is completely saturated. And this time I thought I would try a new technique. I don't know if anybody else does this, I haven't seen it done, but I figured I'd try it for myself. Wet my hand with a little bit of water to get some nice slip, and then I just use my palm to uh, really scrub it in, work it in, get every little fiber, and hopefully that'll help any loose strands really get glued down. And so when the glue has had some time to dry, I've cut it out of the frame, and I'm just going around every 3-4 inches with my scissors and cutting little strands. Just nice bite-sized pieces that I can then start gluing down. I am with my hot glue gun, putting a few little lines of glue and patching it down, kind of rolling the edge a little bit so that it has that nice waterfall effect. And I'm showing off my hands because the hot gluing process is the worst part of the whole thing. With the carpet adhesive still being a bit tacky and the hot glue and the fibrous tufting cloth, everything you touch just sticks to your fingertips. And so now I've got my backing material and I've cut it out to fit the carpet and give it a unceremonious flip. And now it's time to glue it on. It's my spray adhesive. Just a bunch on the back of the rug and a bunch on the back of the backing material. And going one half at a time, working from the middle outwards, getting all the creases out, making sure it's nice and tight. And doing the other side, same thing. Peel it back, spray it on, lay it down. And once that's had a few minutes to dry, I'm going back through with my scissors and cutting off all of the excess that's hanging over the sides. So that way when I flip it back over to its proper side, you won't be able to see any of the backing material. And it looks real nice. So I'm just cutting off all the big pieces and going back through and just trimming off the little jagged edges I left behind so it's nice and smooth. And now all that's left to do is shave it up. And this time I'm using my little, I don't know what you call that, the little jig that helps you have a nice defined level the entire time. And this thing was really cool. It definitely helped me take a lot more off, make the rug a little shorter, because I believe this is going to be used as like a bath mat. So I wanted it to be pretty short. And I took a lot more material off and you get those really satisfying, linty looking curls. And it just really helped everything pop. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And there it is, in all its glory. If I could do it again, I, I think I would clean up my lines on the pedals a little bit more. 
and I think I would opt for not doing the seeds. That's just my take. But let me know what you think. I'm pretty happy overall with how it came out. Still learning a bit. So thank you for watching, and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff and want to follow me on my journey of getting better at making rugs. And until next time, see ya.